What's up, everyone? It's Jason again. In this series, I'm calling my Quick Hit Tech Tips, as I will be quickly going through individual Siemens function blocks. I'll be talking about their inputs, outputs, and how to use them. I hope you enjoy. Welcome back, everyone. In this episode, we're going to continue talking about our motion control functions for technology objects in Siemens motion control. As we said before, these motion control blocks are ISO blocks and meet that standard. So other manufacturers meeting the standard will have the same functionality and the same naming. So you may be more familiar with these blocks than you realize. Today, we're going to be talking about the move absolute function. The MC move absolute function performs a positioning move on the axis and moves the axis to an absolute position. In order to do this, the axis has to know where it is, meaning it has to be honed. In a previous episode, we talked about the MC move relative. The MC move relative did not have to be homed in order to execute. The MC move absolute that we're talking about today must be homed first in order to execute. If you're not familiar with the MC home function, please watch the video that I've done about that function for more information. As with all motion control axes, you will need the MC power, MC reset, and MC halt. MC power turns on the axis, MC resets clears any faults, and MC halt stops the axis if there is any undesired motion. Now, let's talk about the inputs of the MC move absolute. As always, the axis input can be linked with our technology object directly from the project tree by dragging the object into the axis parameter. The execute, as with all motion functions, is a positive edge triggered input. That means once you trigger it, if you hold the input, it will only execute one move. Meaning, if your position, velocity, acceleration, or deceleration parameters are wrong, it will not update those parameters during the move. Meaning, if you have a zero velocity, or a zero acceleration, and you hit execute, this block will activate the busy output, but no motion will happen because you can't move if you can't accelerate and you're trying to move at a zero velocity. As we mentioned in the previous episode, if you were wanting to change the velocity of the move, feel free to, instead of changing the velocity and executing a new move, to just modify the override velocity available in the positioning axis under override and velocity. Let's talk about for a second the difference between a move absolute and a move relative. If you tell a rotary axis to move relative 360 degrees, that axis will rotate once. If you tell that same axis to do a move absolute to 360 degrees, it may rotate one time, zero times, or 1000 times. It all depends on where the current position is because a move absolute moves to the same position every time. Meaning, if you put in a move absolute to a position zero and the current position is 100 degrees, it will move backwards or forwards depending on how the block is set up until it reaches zero degrees. Now, if you execute that block Again, right after that, it will be sitting on zero degrees, and so it will not move. If you are trying to execute 100 degrees of movement and you are sitting on zero, you can perform either a move absolute to position 100 degrees or a move relative with a position of 100 degrees. The difference is if you execute that same function afterwards, the move absolute will not move because it's already sitting on 100 degrees. The move relative will execute the move again and move another 100 degrees. With that said, let's take a look at this direction bit on the input. On this function, it is set up as a one. That means that this axis will always try to move in the negative direction to reach the absolute position. If you want to move it always in the positive direction, you set this to a zero. 
If you want the axis to move the shortest distance to that position, you would put a 3 here. This parameter is only available if modulo is selected on the axis. Modulo means after the parameterized distance is reached, the value will automatically roll over to zero. If you had an axis that one rotation was the entirety of the motion, then you could set that axis up to have a modulo of 360 degrees. That would mean that once the axis reached 360 degrees, it would roll over to zero. Once you activate modulo, this direction input is active. Let's quickly talk about the outputs as they are still common to what we have seen before. Done, busy, command aborted, error and error ID. As always, I will warn the user about the done bit. The done bit is only active for one cycle after the motion is completed. So if you are wanting to see if the motion is completed, it might be better to look at the busy bit and use inverse logic. As always, the command aborted will be true if a function such as MC halt or another move interrupts this move and it is not able to complete. Finally, you may click on the block and hit F1 to find the error ID codes specific for this block and other blocks. As I spoke before about the MC move relative, a couple of things to look out for if your motion is not executing properly is the velocity, acceleration, and deceleration. If any of those values are zero, then the block won't be able to function correctly. If the velocity is zero, it won't be able to move. If the acceleration is zero, it won't be able to accelerate. That is the basic functionality of the move absolute function. There's a lot to talk about in this type of block, but if you have any other questions, feel free to drop a comment below. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.